Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. A developing story out of Norman County as Minnesota state and local agencies are investigating what they're calling a death scene. The Norman County Sheriff's Office responded to reports of a body found in a field near County Highway 39 today around 730 in the morning. That's near Bora, Minnesota. It's unclear what happened at this point in the death, but investigators are continuing to work on it, according to the Sheriff's Office. Minnesota law enforcement stated they don't believe there's a danger to the public. We will continue to gather information on this story. So stick with Valley News Live for more updates. It's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say 39-year-old Jacqueline Morin is wanted on a probation violation for a drug paraphernalia charge. You can call your local law enforcement if you have any information on her. We needed a breather today from the falling snow, and we got it. Justin, hopefully it'll be quiet this evening, too. And thank you, Andrea. Good evening, everybody. It's going to be quiet for a long time, and I think that's uh, pretty good news, and we have a nice warm-up in store. Uh, we are staying into the upper 20s, some places into the lower 30s as of right now across most of the region, and combine that with sunshine, it actually feels uh, pretty good uh, in most places. Winds across the area, mainly northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so a light breeze should dissipate a little later on tonight as we see uh, more clear skies as we make your way from Fargo points off to the west, more cloud cover into our Minnesota counties. So we will see partly to mostly cloudy skies tonight as temperatures fall back through the 20s into the teens. Now we'll tell you how long our dry and warm weather pattern is going to last. That is coming up later in the newscast. All right, thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. Most people in the northern half of the country know about shoveling snow. Sometimes you have to dig out your car. Sometimes you have to dig out your cattle. The bull is up to is in snow up to its horns because of a blizzard, and it looks like a difficult task to get him out. In fact, this family in southwestern South Dakota spent four hours digging their bulls out of the snow yesterday. Today, they went back out to try and find the rest rest of their cattle. Dale Jesse Vasu, who shot the video, says it's an example of the loving side of ranching. Thankfully, the area doesn't expect more snow over the next few days. The North Dakota DOT and Highway Patrol opened I-94 from Bismarck to Fargo today. Here are pictures taken of or off of I-94 between Jamestown and Buffalo. The DOT says these areas got hit the hardest during the recent winter storm. Authorities are asking drivers to use caution when traveling because some areas of I-94 are still covered with ice and compacted snow. Crews continue to work on the interstate as well as the two-lane highways, which remain blocked or reduced to a single lane. As of 4.30, 96 people living in rural southeastern North Dakota are still without power because of the storm that ripped through the state. Valley News Team's Maddie Jelseth checked in to see when they're expected to get their lights back on. This is why Dakota Valley Electric isn't able to turn the lights on for those 227 consumers who are still without power as of this afternoon. This is something we haven't experienced before where we can't get out to the locations to work like it is today. Craig says the community has been a huge help, plowing out streets so his linemen are able to fix the broken lines. I have a whole page of people that called about the type of equipment they had in large tractors, payloaders, four-wheel drive tractors, or dozers, and things like that. So that's, it proves I can select from that list when the guys are in that area, you know, to open it up. Craig says they're doing the best they can and hope to get power back on within a few days. If we could just have the uh, uh, no snow conditions where we could drive everywhere to, for repairs, we would be done by midnight tonight. But this is gonna stretch it out, you know, I'm afraid, I'm, I'm telling people three days because of the conditions. As for the people who will be without power for a couple more days, Craig says most people have a backup generator that they're using in the meantime. In Milner, Mandy Jalseth, Valley News Live. To see when the power will be back on in that area, go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. The latest flood outlook increases the likelihood of moderate to major flooding along the Red River. Fueled by two recent wet and snowy storms in the valley, the projections say it's likely that the Red River in Fargo-Moorhead will rise to about 35 feet. It also shows a 50-50 chance it'll reach nearly 38 feet. The numbers are two to three feet higher than the report issued a week ago. Fargo's record crest was 40.8 feet in 2009, but much has been done in terms of flood protection since then. And the 
odds of the red reaching that level are projected at less than 1 in 10. In Grand Forks, the new outlook suggests a strong chance that the red will top 47 and a 50-50 chance the red will get to about 50 and a half feet. There is still some good news in the latest flood outlook. The Weather Service says the forecast over the next two weeks is favorable for a gradual spring thaw. Flooding has forced hundreds to leave their homes in Minnesota. Evacuations started Thursday evening at a mobile home park in the town of Jordan. People headed to a nearby shelter operated by the American Red Cross. About 300 homes are affected, accounting for about 1,000 residents. Water is up to three feet high. The flooding is a result of an ice jam on a nearby creek that redirected water to the neighborhood. A train derailed this morning near Lesur, Minnesota. The 12 car, a 12 rail car locomotive crashed and spilled diesel fuel and then caught fire. Responding crews let the fire burn itself out. A Union Pacific spokesperson says the incident happened before 5 a.m. on a track that runs near the Mississippi River. There was no indication of spillage into the river, but an absorbent boom was used as a precaution. Train crew members were taken to a local hospital, but no serious injuries were reported. There's no word yet on what caused the crash. An investigation is underway. Moorhead Public Works is asking for your help clearing storm drains as temperatures begin to warm. Crews have started clearing the drains this week, but they're also still removing and hauling snow. Moorhead has 6,200 drains and they could use some assistance. If you would like to help, you can contact Public Works at this phone number, 218-299-5422. It's like milk and cookies. Beer and bacon seem to make the perfect pair. And you can try out this combo tomorrow at Bernie's Wines and Liquors Beer and Bacon Festival. There will be over 20 different local breweries and restaurants to sample from, with each vendor having their own twist. Now we make beer specifically for this festival because that's what people are looking for. They want something unique. They want something different. Uh, they want something fun and exciting. The festival starts at 6 tomorrow. Tickets are on sale for 35 bucks and can be bought at the Fargo Dome or Bernie's. Dramatic dash cam video shown.